In this simulation, we're going to look at uh, using initial conditions to cause an oscillator to start up. So here we have a simple cross-coupled oscillator, and we have an LC tank that's designed to resonate at about 2.4 gigahertz, uh, not including the parasitic, so we'd have to adjust it slightly for that. We have an inductor that we've added a resistor in parallel with uh, it, uh, and uh, the quality factor is designed to be about 15. Uh, the inductor here, uh, each of the inductors uh, in the differential pair is 500 picohenries for a total series inductance of 1 nanohenry, and that means that the parallel inductance uh, that gives us a Q of 15 is about 113 ohms. Uh, this would mean that each transistor needs to provide about 8 millisiemens of GM. Let's run a simulation uh, really quick here uh, with just the DC uh, to see what the GM of the transistors is. All right, our GM is about 9 millisiemens, and this means that we should have enough to kick off oscillation, all things being ideal. So let's use the simulation to set a couple of convergence aids, and we're going to set initial conditions. Now, if you note here, I've set an initial condition uh, on node out P uh, to be 0 volts and out N to be 1.8 volts. And this is a condition that cannot be uh, maintained uh, in the circuit, so it should cause it to oscillate uh, or, or to, to kick off an oscillation if, uh, if the system is able to do so. Now, this is a fair thing to do uh, in terms of uh, simulations because uh, this circuit wants to uh, stay, uh, it doesn't want to oscillate uh, naturally. Uh, it would have a bistable state where uh, no oscillation would occur. But in real life, there would be something that would kick an oscillation off. Uh, when we turn the system on, there'd be a transient. Uh, there might be some uh, asymmetry in the circuit uh, that would cause the thing to um, uh, pull down unequally on one side and kick off an oscillation. So those are the kinds of things that we're looking for with this circuit that would make it oscillate. Uh, of course, in our ideal simulator world, everything here is completely symmetric, uh, so we would get that potential for a bistable state. All right, we've set the initial condition, and now we're going to turn the transient simulation on and run it. And what you notice here is that some oscillation does start, uh, but it is uh, quenched pretty uh, quickly, or quiesces. What we're going to do is increase the size of the transistor to increase the GM until we find an oscillation. So let's try increasing the size of the transistors to 24 microns. You'll notice I have both transistors uh, selected and I'm applying changes to all selected. All right, we'll save the result and we'll run a simulation. and you notice that we do have an oscillation occurring. We've got a nice sine wave that's uh, oscillating between about 1.8 and minus 1.8 volts, which is exactly what we'd expect for the differential voltage between out P and out N. You'll also notice that the GM is a little bit bigger than, uh, than we would have thought we were, would require ideally. Now let's see what happens if we turn off the initial conditions. So let's just delete both of these initial conditions and we'll rerun the simulation. All right, now we're looking at the output now and we see zero uh, volts uh, differential voltage between out P and out N, which means that there's no oscillation. So you can use the initial conditions as a means to kick off an oscillation, and what you typically want to do when you use those initial conditions is set up a condition that couldn't possibly be maintained uh, in real life in the circuit. Since this is a symmetric circuit, uh, what we uh, try and do is set one of the nodes uh, at the opposite polarity of the other node, uh, and then uh, the, the oscillation would have to uh, uh, occur uh, if there were one uh, possible. All right, so we'll stop there.